The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. I'm Patrick, Head of Technology at professional services firm Collins SBA. I'm a former financial advisor who just loves solving business problems and creating better client experiences using technology. Join me each week as we unpack the tech on offer to advice professionals, stay on top of tech trends, and help you break free from the analysis paralysis experience when building and maintaining a great tech stack. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where your clients have the best wealth technology at their fingers. With NetWealth's next-gen client portal and mobile app, clients can view and manage their portfolio, assets, and accounts wherever they are. By adding external bank and property feeds to their NetWealth account, they can get a true picture of their wealth. And by giving them the ability to transact and manage their cash, they can feel in control of their wealth. A world of client engagement awaits. Discover it at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Today we're talking streamlining the data collection process of any professional service business with James Rose, co-founder at Content Snare. So Content Snare is built on the idea to simply make it easy to get information from clients. This is obviously far easier said than done, but I really love the approach James and the team have taken here. What Content Snare does is reduce the endless back and forth via email to collect info or files from clients while still keeping your requests tailored to the particular client. It improves the security of your data collection process. It handles all follow-ups and reminders. And with its open architecture, it allows you to integrate with the other tools in your tech stack. I genuinely believe a tool like Content Snare reduces a lot of the perceived need for a client portal or at the very least, it's your ticket to ditching emails and method for requesting information. I started by asking James what the oldest piece of tech he still owns is and whether he still uses it. (laughs) I think it's actually my Logitech computer speakers. I've had them since 2004 and they are still going strong. Like unbelievable. Yeah, true. I just like, I can't believe anything like that was made after like 1990 lasts that long, you know, like, yeah, as, as they say, they don't make them like they used to. And yeah, I, I just oh, don't, exactly. I don't think I've got any actual technology product that's lasted that long. It's, it's, is it, I assume they're one of those speakers where you feel that tactile um, switch turn on as you sort of turn the dial up on the volume. <laughs> oh, that's, no, that's just, I have oh. two separate switches. I've got the switch and then the volume, but um, I de- it definitely doesn't play nice and has, it has fuzz in it when I use certain other equipment, but normally they right. actually go hard. Yeah. Okay. A bit of, bit of fuzz is all right, I think, after 20 years. So you've definitely <laughs> got your money's worth. No, that's awesome. And then maybe this decade or last sort of 12, 18 months, are there maybe one or two cool ways that you're using AI either mm. personally or in your business or businesses? My favorite use case of AI is pulling out testimonials from customer calls. So I get on a you know 15 minute call with a uh, customer, I ask them a bunch of questions about like how they've used our product and, and what they liked and didn't like. And then I just basically say, hey, this is what our product does. This is the benefits. This is the prompts, by the way, um, mm. you know, yeah. from the transcript below, pull out testimonials. Um, I want them to you know, feel free to paraphrase, remove filler words and combine similar things. Yeah. And like, honestly, the testimonials it pulls out are like the exact ones that I would have pulled out a lot of the yeah, time. Well, it is crazy. Okay. It's one of my favorite use cases by far. If, if you want another one, it's it's um, summarizing all the support questions that come into Content Snare oh, so nice. I can still see. Uh, and it creates a summary of all the summaries at the end of each week um, so that I can right. quickly get a gauge on what people are asking on the support desk because I don't do support anymore. And that's a really yeah. good way yeah. to um, keep tabs on, like, you know, see what people are asking for. So I don't want to lose touch with customers. That's awesome. Um, and I think that's- I think a lot of businesses can use something like that. I think any business could use something like that, both of those examples. Yeah, and especially with the testimonial stuff, like it's in their own words. Like you're yeah. not – I mean, yes, you've sort of said paraphrasing, but like you're taking it from actual language. It's not being mm. sort of taken out of context. I think that's really cool. And I, and I will say that generally I think 
than AI sucks. Like it's it's so right. it's no nearly as helpful as everyone's pretending it is at the moment. Yeah. And I've tried a lot of things to nail okay. down. You've had a good what, crack. Yeah, like I, I'm using it all the time and testing and playing and like you know we implemented one AI um, feature in our product because it's actually yeah. good. You know, it took okay. us a long okay. time. It wasn't just like oh summarize this email. You know, we're like yeah. the obligatory AI that every product is putting in. It was like oh yeah. no, they're like this is actually really cool and it saves time. So yeah, we, we experiment a lot and those two are like by far my two favorite things. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. That's really really insightful for I think everyone listening. Um, and yeah, AI sucks. I'll go with that with the tagline. Um, but, but content at the snare. moment, at the moment, I expect it at to go. <laughs> okay, maybe GPT five or something. Um, yeah. So content snare. I'm really excited to learn more and sort of um, dig in. Where does it sit in? I'll, I'll say the advice tech space, but what sort of part or parts of the tech stack does it fit into? So typically. It depends who I'm talking to, but for a financial planner, it's typically um, the onboarding stage, right? So the, the whole idea of Contest Snare is to make it easy to get information from clients. So right. everyone's familiar with this, you know, every time you need stuff from a client, whether it's just answers or documents, whatever, even getting them to take a picture of something and send it to you can be a pain, okay. you know, like, yep. yeah, like, and you end up going back and forth over email, chasing them up for stuff. They send you five of the 10 things you asked for, two of them aren't even right. So you got to go back and go, ah, those aren't the right files. And now you've got this email where you've got the email thread where you've got some of the wrong files and some of the right files. And you got to know yep. what's what they've actually done, what they haven't Red done. Red writing everywhere. Yep. Red writing and then blue writing and then yellow writing or whatever it is to try and See like, differentiate. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So that's, that's the problem we fix. Um, you know, it keeps it all together in one platform. Uh, so whether you need questions or documents or whatever. And so, like I said, for financial planners, this is typically onboarding. For accounting firms, it's onboarding, but also um, compliance documentation at the end of the year, Yep. monthly queries, ongoing stuff. Yeah, basically yep. accountants need a lot of information from clients. So it's yep. it gets used a lot. duty stuff. Yeah. And there's a lot of planning that goes into it. I think, I mean, even without being involved in tech or like operations in an accounting firm, you only have to look as far as like accounting specific social media pages like the big four accountant, like over 700K <laughs> followers. Great Just account. bring it up bring it up now and I almost clicked on big four holiday parks. Even <laughs> then probably probably have um, a use case for content snare. But it's it's yeah, all you've got to do is look at that page and you've got, you know, to replace accountants with AI, clients will need to send their files on time and accurate records. <laughs> accounts yeah. are safe. The closer the deadline, the lower the professional skepticism. Revenue increased because we sold more. I miss going to bed without accounting on my mind. Accounting's not boring, it's stressful. And yeah, clients sending JPEGs of Excel spreadsheets. Like yeah. it's pretty clear that that this industry in terms of accounting and we sort of mentioned before we hit record around the, um, I guess, find your playing and accounting coming together. Like there is just so many use cases for this. Yep. And, you know, even when I sort of signed up earlier today just to get a, a feel for what you've built, you know, I have to say the onboarding or that sign up flow is really clean, which instills oh, confidence about the experience that clients of a firm that a signing up are going to go through. Like it feels really intentional and really approachable. Like do you mind sort of talking about like how you've sort of made those decisions and like now we've got this other way of providing content and providing documents. I assume we're trying to make it easier, right? Like can you sort of talk about the design process and like even when you go into like a content snare request, it's really clear oh, yeah. with the contents on the left-hand side and like it's just really simple. Yeah, so... Um, I don't know the nice way to say this. Um, like <laughs> we are dealing with people that aren't very good with computers and this isn't the financial planners or the accountants. This is their clients, right? So we are, we have to build everything assuming that like a 90 year old grandma is going to use it, right? Sorry, specifically the client facing stuff. So it has to be incredibly simple. And I think this is where a lot of other portals, or, well, I, I don't like even being called a portal uh, yeah. anymore because they've got such a, a, like a bad name for being complex to use and whatever and right. like that. And that, that's what tends to be like a lot of people will try to use some kind of portal for this, which is mm. like it ends up being a dumping ground for files or like a, clients have to 
uh, log in and remember a password and we know yeah. all know how bad clients are at that. Yeah. Uh, you know, so these are all the things we knew clients were going to struggle with. Um, so we just, at every, the design process is, especially on the client side, is just think of the most technologically, uh, like Maybe someone who's that bad with tech. Yeah, like the yeah. least technical person you know, imagine them trying to use this and is it clear what mm-hmm. this button does? Is it clear what, like where to click? Is it clear, like, is it easy, you know? So yeah, we've spent three hours just trying to, going back and forth on the text for one button before we implemented <laughs> it. And, and long, longer, man, like there's one button which we've been going back and forth on for weeks and, and still haven't worked out what we're going to put on it because we just haven't got something easy enough that, you know, doesn't set, meet our criteria. No. And it, it, it's really hard um, because it's obviously lots of different use cases. And, um, yeah. but just to swing back to the, the financial planet, like the, or the accountant side of things, it's the same. Like we're not, we're not assuming probably as bad technophobia on <laughs> technophobia on that side of things. Yeah. But, um, you know, it is just something we think about, you know, like, is it really clear what this feature does? Um, you know, where the first time someone comes into this app, where are they going to go? We've made big mistakes over, over time. Like we, right. I, I watched some people use content snare for the first time on a zoom call and they all went to a page that we just did not expect them to go to straight away. Right. And we were like, wow, like that, that's a really broken flow. Please don't go there straight away. But you know, then we had to go and fix that page. So you know, you learn and, and you change things over time. Yeah. No, it makes sense. And yeah, there's a lot of power in just observing how users use oh. your tool or either mm-hmm. clients or as well as, I mean, for you, obviously it's your clients are um, the firms that use it or the businesses. And hence going back to that AI example of support tickets, right? In terms of summarizing what's coming through. Mm. But I don't know, like I think, um, this is just my opinion, but I think most practices think that they need a client portal. But what I reckon most of them, most of them actually need is, as you're sort of suggesting, that sort of simple, intuitive way to eliminate the back and forth and just get documents and data securely on time. Like, I mean, how, I mean, industry agnostic tool, but what are some of the coolest ways you've seen clients use Content Snare? Like, have they sort of gone outside the, um, you know, document retrieval or information request sort of flow. Like, give us some. Yeah, some tips on that. there's two two things come to mind. So it is funny just seeing the way people like. Sometimes they ask us, they're like, "Oh, can we use it for this?" And you know, that's how we got into accounting and financial planning. Okay. We, we built Content Snare for web designers to collect website content from clients. That's why it's called Content Snare. Yeah. Um. You know, but. One day we saw accountants using it. Uh, financial planners came a bit later and we were like, what? Mm. They're like, oh, I know this isn't for accountants, but we're using it this way. And we were like, wait, mm. what? Oh my God, this is an amazing use case. And like, you get way more value out of this. And that was kind of our pivot into the space. But yeah, one, so people are sick of chasing people for information. This can include teammates. We've seen people use it internally to chase <laughs> right. their teammates for stuff. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, and the other one's like training. This has been kind of, Oh, like really LMS. interesting to me. So yeah, it's like a pseudo LMS where they provide because we can in context you can put instructions on how to answer a question more effectively or to pro, like prime uh, your clients on you know how you want like them to answer a question. To the question. Yep. Yeah. So people will use that to actually deliver like a course, so like a video um, mm-hmm. and maybe some text after the video with a series of questions as a quiz, for example. Um, nice that might deliver them a certification. It might be new staff training. Like I wouldn't use it as like a standard course that you don't really care if someone completes. You sell this online course, whatever. But if you need someone to complete it because they're there's new staff or you're onboarding like um, drivers. So there's a bunch of companies that have drivers. So couriers and taxi mm-hmm. type companies. Okay. They use con- like a bunch of them use Content Snare and onboard drivers to their um, business with content right. snare. So it just becomes training essentially. Yeah. Um, or yeah, like a certification is the other, the other big example. Yeah. No, awesome. So you're potentially consolidating other tech as well as um, reducing the burden of email. So that's really cool. Um, yeah. And I mean, just looking on the sort of free trial, thank you, uh, which hmm. I know is open to everyone, but you've got a truckload Excuse the pun with the trucks there, but the <laughs> built-in templates out of the box, there's a lot of them which suggest, yeah, you've got a lot of industries using the tool and I assume that speeds up the time to value as well as alleviate sort of blank canvas 
anxiety for users as well? Yeah. You know, it's funny. When we first made templates, it was kind of the entire point was to show people that it could be used for lots of different things because okay. people come in to Contest Snare thinking, I need this for client onboarding and then never really branch out of that. And we want them to get as much value from the product as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, So we wanted to make it really clear that they can, you know, an accountant, for example, can use it for new staff questionnaires, FBT questionnaires, SMSF stuff. Like, you know, it goes on and on. Um, So that was actually the original purpose. Uh, We wanted people to see and maybe even then go, oh, my client could use this and refer it to them. Mm -hmm. Um, But it turns out, yes, that has been massive in like the eliminating blank uh, blank yeah, page syndrome, yeah. whatever it's called, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. that like that's actually been the bigger benefit is people are like actually use them more than we thought. Like we thought people would be so stuck with, you know, well, not stuck, but like they'd, they'd have something they want to use, their own template that they would want to port into Contest Snare. But a lot of people just end up using ours. A lot of people yeah. don't have anything to start with. Um, so, so it helps them get up to speed quicker. But also a lot of people are like, oh, a lot of this is like better than what we're asking anyway. And they use mm-hmm. like a bulk of what we're asking with their own few questions on the end sort of thing. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's actually worked out well. No, that's cool. I think I was probably being a bit harsh on the accountants, but they especially I found in my experience need to see what version one looks like before they start to get creative and give feedback. Like before that, it's like, what do you want? And it's like, I don't know. And then version one gets shipped and then immediately it's, like, immediately it's like, oh, this is crap or we need that, we need this. Like as soon as you mm. give them not the guardrails but what you're thinking about yeah. in, a, it, in a way that is visual, immediately you get what you need in terms of feedback and version two yeah. is 10 times better. I think you're right. And it really surprises me how many accountants don't have an existing process that they can just copy in. Like I would have yeah. thought this is something that people have to do all the time, right? Like on board mm-hmm. a new client. And a lot of people don't have like a checklist or something ready that they could send yeah. to a client. So yeah. like I thought they would have, I was like, Oh, that process, you know, they're already doing that process. They must have something that they want to bring into contest now, but yeah. it's actually pretty, pretty common um, that they I mean, don't. Yeah. I think too, like just in our business, we've got three teams within our accounting division and all of them have a, a slightly different, yeah, onboarding checklist. So it's in the sort of silo, <laughs> silos times three. So there's obviously a need for me to sort of step in there and and find one way on one system. But um, I noticed some other things too. Like I know I'm jumping around as I always do, but <laughs> things like every time or everything that a client or user types is auto saved, like things like that, is it making it easy for clients as well to? I mm. think it's more approachable to fulfill a request than one big jump. Yeah. Through. Well, and, and see, this again comes back to we have to assume the least technical person you know. Um, yep. And this was something that we experienced, you know, when we were getting website content. So just, just for a little bit of background, we had a web design agency and that's how, how Content Snare got spun out of that because it was a huge problem for us. Um, but, you know, we had all these kind of other systems that we'd kind of set up for people to send us their stuff. And we had like a lot of forms tools will have this button that's like save, save and come back later or whatever, or save my progress. The amount of people that never hit that and lose all their work is insane. Yeah. Like you would think it's pretty might like it doesn't happen very often, but no, no, it happens pretty regularly. So that was actually version one of content snare was like, there must be, everything must be saved as you type it basically. Yeah. Kind of like Google docs or any of those online docs. It's just, Locked in. So if they close the page halfway through a sentence, they might get a reminder email or SMS a week later. They access it on a completely different device. Um, they can continue where they left off. That's another thing too, is like some, some tools try to do auto saving, but they stick it in the browser memory. Uh, Um, and so that means if you open a different browser or clear your, clear your cache or you're using some kind of private browser or you're on a different device, you lose it all. Right. A great example of that is client starts on the phone on sort of public transport on the way home and then escalates the process to the desktop when all the files are needed. Um, yeah. And look, that's funny. We, uh, one of my favorite testimonials for Content Snare was this accountant uh, in Western Australia. And they, she said um, when she was trialed Content Snare, she sent herself a request um, and then went to school to pick her kids up. While she was waiting in the car park, she pulled out her phone, started typing stuff in on her phone got back to the office, saw it was all there on the computer and was like, that was like her moment where she's like, we need this. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Like a lived experience. Yeah. Like lived pain, but lived convenience too. Mm. I think too, like just on the phone stuff, like 
I don't know why, but I can't send like important emails on my phone. Like there's just something about it that I need to get onto the desktop to see everything before I click send. I don't yeah. know why. Maybe it's uh, on the, on, but then on the flip side, there are, you know, certain types of clients, tradies come to mind that yeah. are, that won't do anything not on the phone. Nice. They, they, sometimes I don't have access to a computer for a long period of time, you know? Yeah. No, that's that's awesome. Um, and you've got some really cool other things there too. Like, um, you know, in an email you're saying, can I get this data by this date? And so, yes, we can add sort of due dates to like a content snare request. But then if you think about the due date, well, the due date's been reached and it's like, well, you're naughty, give us the stuff now, it's overdue. <laughs> But I noticed as well, you've got that cascading sort of maybe it's 10 days out, you start reminding them to say, hey, this is coming up. Like it's sort of gentle and mm-hmm. then it ramps up. Yeah, well, I mean, that's configurable. So, okay, cool. Yep. Yeah. So, and and you can actually have different levels. Like you might create five different types. or Like what I've actually seen more common is just two. One, which is like our normal clients who are actually pretty good at getting us stuff and the other ones who need to be reminded like every two days. Because okay. it's urgent and they'll, they'll set, so they'll create like the, the normal default, we call it an email schedule, yep. uh, which is just a list of emails and when they're going to go out. Um, yep. And then they'll create like an urgent one or like a problem client one. And they'll, so they'll assign that one to the problem client and it'll just hammer them <laughs> with emails. <laughs> Obviously, I wouldn't um, recommend doing that uh, yep. unless you really, really need it. Uh, but yeah, it's it's funny how to see it get used that Deadlines way. Deadlines for a reason. Mm. Um no, it's, that's, that's awesome. I love how that's configurable. And I also notice you can pre-fill answers as well for clients. Like in our business, the mantra is to tell your story once across the different business divisions. Mm. And I assume that alleviates clients or users going, you know, I've, you've got this information while you ask me for the 17th time. Yeah, so I think um, pre-filling can be used in a couple of ways. That is one. But the other one is like, you know, sometimes people will be sitting down with a client, um, whether that's a in person or Zoom meeting, start filling stuff out with them. They'll like actually ask yeah, some cool. of the questions then and there, and send the rest home as homework. So that can be used like that. But yeah, also pre filling stuff you already know. Um, the other option, honestly, is like if you if you're going to send a request to somebody who's an existing client you're probably just going to not have any of those, you know, you don't need their name and business name and stuff like that. It's time. So you just yeah. delete those questions. You don't necessarily need to ask them again um, okay. unless you're, you know, something might've changed. Like some people will use content center like that. They'll duplicate the original request they sent to a client and say, have any of your details changed? Just click yeah. like, if, if not just click submit, if they have changed, change the, change the answers. Nice. So instead of like a, because I was going to ask, do you think there's any merit in maybe using Content Snare to collect docs or information like as the event happens? Because I was thinking about, oh, especially in our firm, like accounting every year, it's the same sort of checklist. It's the same big chunky exercise. Mm-hmm. But what you're saying is if, if not much has changed, you can just clone whether that's through automation or manually what we did last year mm-hmm. and just fill in the blanks rather than have a, a full exercise or start from 0% again. Yeah, that's right. Um, you do have to kind of delete, like, yeah. If you if you've got, you know got bank statements or something like that, um, you know, you probably want to delete those because you don't want last year's bank statements. But yeah, um, yeah there's there's no kind of no selective duplication at this point. But I mean, you just duplicate the whole thing and delete the stuff that you don't need again. Nice. And I mean, now we've got a lot of data flowing through um, into content snare. So whether that's through text fields or documents, I noticed you've got some sort of direct integrations. Do you mind sort of talking about that? And then we can sort of get on to like the power of tools like Zapier. Yeah. Yeah. So the direct ones are the classics, Google drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, SharePoint. Nice. And that, you know, it's funny. They, they all work kind of the same way. Like the basically people have to create a folder for content snare and then we can create folders within that. So we can say like, oh, yeah. you know, put every file that comes from a specific client in a client folder or whatever, or, or actually put, make a subfolder for the name of the request. So it might be like slash client name slash onboarding or whatever. And we can dump all the files in there. We create a PDF of all their answers as well. So like you know, oh, anything okay. they've typed in. Yeah. Or you can do a doc docx file as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and then, then the big one more recently, especially for accountants is um, FYI docs. 
So um, we have a very good integration with FYI, I think. Um, it, we have the ability to specify where in FYI every single file is going to go. So right. you can actually break it up into different, I think, for those not familiar with the terminology, it's like cabinet. You, you put a file in a cabinet and then you've got categories within the cabinet. Um, so you can specify every single file. It's like if this is a company constitution, we want that to go to you know this other cabinet for like company documents or something. Yeah, so they're the, they're the direct ones. Nice. And yeah, I think that would be uh, super beneficial for most firms. Like they are the, I'm not going to say essentials, but you'd say 90% of firms would be using those sort of document management tools. Um, yeah. So, I mean, Sweet Files is another big one and th- okay. th- that's kind of there almost directly by SharePoint. So, we can actually just push files into SharePoint and they show up in Sweet Files and there's a nice. help doc on how that works. The one I yep. didn't mention was XPM. So, both XPM and oh, yeah. FYI will pull the client list in so you don't have to recreate them in Content Snare. Yep. No, awesome. And yeah, for listeners that aren't aware, so XPM is Zero Practice Manager, which oh, yeah. is a accounting, um, yeah, as the name suggests, practice management tool. And I'm actually not too familiar with FYI docs, but I assume that um, also helps with things like work papers and things like that, as well as being a document management system. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure it does work papers. I mean, that I probably okay. should know because we talk to them quite a lot. Um, someone should kick me if, if it does do work papers, and I said it doesn't. But um, like it is, it does like all kinds of workflows and stuff for accounts. Yeah, cool. Like it is quite a beastie product. It does a lot of different stuff. Yeah, nice. And then yeah, I sort of mentioned Zapier before, and my eyes sort of light up when you sort of see that mm-hmm. in the list of either integrations or sort of triggers and actions in tools like that. Do you like yeah? When you've got that, it really just opens up sort of en- not I'm not going to say endless possibilities, but basically any firm that's got any other tech that has a Zapier or sort of APIs that are documented or well documented, it means sort of game on. Do you have like any good examples of how customers or clients are using Zapier with Content Snap or tools yeah, like Zapier? Yeah, like you said, I mean, you said it's almost endless. It pretty much is endless. Like, God, the amount of stuff you can do with Zapier is just crazy. Um, yep. I'm I'm a massive user of Zapier. In fact, I right. I used to teach people how to use it and set up stuff, set up automations oh, really? for people as like a business. Um, yeah. I've got Zapier swag around here somewhere that they <laughs> sent me. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean – it really is just about anything. So a big one in the accounting space is like uh, ignition. So when someone signs a an engagement letter in practice ignition, well, sorry, yep. just ignition now, yep. um, you can automatically generate a request in content snare. So nice. or, and send optionally. You could you could just create it as a draft or you could send it automatically. But, you know, creating the draft might be so, – so a workflow I like is to – and this, this isn't just content snare, it's create something as a draft and then post it to like Teams or Slack as a link. Yeah, okay. So you get the nice. notification to say, yep, the the client has signed the engagement letter and here is the link to go and finalize the content snare request. So then they don't have to go to content snare and do it. They just click the link, bang, they, they open up the request in their browser, nice. make their changes, hit send, you know? So I like that. That's like a three-step workflow. Um, another one is sending requests automatically when a deal stage changes in a CRM. So if you're using HubSpot or something, you might say when I add a tag to this client or when I move them to a, when their deal changes to a different stage, automatically send a request. Um, on the other end of things, like when the request is finished in content snare, you might want to push that data somewhere. So some people will say like update my CRM with the new information that's come Mm -hmm. from content snare. Yeah. Uh, like so custom fields and that they'll, they'll take the data out of content center and push it in they might put that in a spreadsheet so you know if they've got lots of people submitting you know random use cases people running events with content center, yeah, so they get okay. all the speaker information from the different yeah. exhibitors and they every time an exhibitor finishes their thing they want to put that in a spreadsheet so that's like another automation um, sticking yeah. stuff in an air table or spreadsheet creating tasks in a project management system you know, so when when a client has finished, create a task to go in and check everything. Yeah. For example, yeah, it's yeah, a few. It's really cool. No, it's awesome. I think um, just some of those examples there sort of um, insinuate that you can really run your business with, like you might set up all your templates in Content Snare, set up your Zapier um, zaps, and then the only time you really touch Content Snare is when clients are completing those requests. Like you're not jumping in there and manually sending them out or configuring them. 
Yeah. Would that be a fair assumption? Yeah. I mean, it depends yeah, if on you, the complexity of the business. Yeah, that's right. Like if you're sending really similar stuff to each client, that can work. You know, if you but if you want bespoke requests, you want to, you want a really high touch process that you know you're only asking them the exact questions that you need to ask. Um, yep. Making a very nice, you know, like I said, bespoke process. Then yeah, you're going to be in content snare. Well, that, deleting that's stuff. actually something that I didn't even think about. Like you can actually. Like if you think about tools like, I don't know, JotForm or any other standard form builder where you're trying to categorize every client into this one set of forms, like like it means technically if you use one of those tools, you'd have to clone it and create all the questions yes. again. But what you're saying is you can actually take your baseline template, actually customize it for that maybe complex or difficult or mm-hmm. maybe not complex client and actually enhance their experience because it's actually tailored to them. Yeah, Rather so just a one size fits all approach. Yeah. yeah, so the the other ways people do that normally is they'll either create a master template with everything they could possibly yeah. want, and then delete the few things that aren't relevant to this client. But we also you can save pieces of a request as a template. So we've got a, oh, okay. within a request, there's a list of pages, and each page has a list of sections. You can create just a section as a template or just a page. So page nice. might be like, you know, I was speaking to someone who did like kitchen uh, house remodeling just before this uh, interview. Okay. Yeah. Um, and like, I was like, you yep. want a page template for a kitchen and for a bathroom. And like, so they can actually build their request ah, specifically nice. for each project. But yeah, so it might be the same, like a, a client, you know, do you have a company, a trust and an SMSF? Right. You might use those as pages. Um, yeah, yeah, that's really cool. So you, that just, um, yeah, ticks a lot of boxes from a scalability perspective and consistency too. Like that's awesome. So even if they are being edited or customized, you're still getting the data you need mm. and you're not having to go back to the client and say, hey, I forgot to ask you this question. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you mind sort of touching on like as I sort of said before, we've now got a lot of data, so documents and and text, etc. Some sensitive, some not, but it is still client data. Like, what what's the approach been to, or the approach um, around security been like in terms of how do clients access documents? What does that sort of look like? Sorry, access requests rather. Yeah, so this is obviously a huge, huge part of what we do. Um, yeah especially once we moved into accountants. It's funny because, oh, you know, we st- like I said, we started with web designers and most of that information was going to be public anyway. So yep. <laughs> it didn't need Makes to sense. be yep. uh, like a big worry, but now that's huge. Yeah. So, um, I mean, we, we've already always followed, you know, industry best practice, security mm-hmm. hardening um, for from a technical perspective. Um, now we have um, – so two-factor authentication can be enforced across an organization. So you like no one in, on your team uh, can even like the next, you could turn this option on and next time they log in, it's just like it doesn't even let them in until they've added two-factor, which is actually yeah, a requirement okay. to integrate with XPM. XPM like yep. zero forced yeah, that Yeah, that down massively, yep. Yeah, and I think we do the same with FYI. And because obviously, you know, accounting firms have a lot of sensitive information. So yeah, this yep. is, I understand why they enforce that. Mm-hmm. Um uh, we use AWS, you know, like everything's, everything's on services yeah. that are incredibly secure, um, encryption in transit, encryption at rest, like all the standard stuff. I mean, if, if anyone does want to read more into it, they can go to the features page we have on security. Yeah. Um, that we've got like entire things about this. We're also in the process of getting our ISO 27001, which is kind of a, a badge a that says, mm-hmm. yes, you are doing all the right things. Uh, to to yep. keep data secure. Yeah. No, awesome. And then from like a client perspective, when they click a link that's tailored for them, are they are they entering like a one-time password or is it just sort of free for all or how does it look? Yeah, so the people have options. So there's okay, um cool. yep. by default, well, not by default. So the way most people would use it is just via what we call an un- unguessable link. So the client receives a link in their email. Yeah. They click it and they're in. They don't have to do anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so an, an unguessable link is basically something that would take a very, very, very long time for a computer to guess, like a, more than a decade. So the chances of some random just showing up to that client's request is very, very low. Yeah. Um, if not, like it's basically considered impossible. Like the, the okay. way it's done is like, you know, Stripe, will you like a payment gateway would use this kind of um mm-hmm. what, like link um anyway um but there's a risk there that if their email gets compromised that bad actor can just click that link now that link's only active in the period that uh request is open so it could only be a oh, week okay. or two 
Um, yeah, but nice. after that, so there's like, you know, a risk management thing there. But then on top of that, people can add a pin code or they can require their account, uh, a client to create like an, an account. So a username, yeah. password, email, oh, password, okay. yeah. which we don't, again, definitely don't recommend. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but pin code is pretty standard. Um, you know that sort of that that is two layers essentially of um, yeah. security there. But nice. the other one is we have this thing called a confidential field, where anything you're really worried about, you mark as yeah. confidential. Nice. And once it's provided by the client, they can never see it again. So anyone accessing that link, even the client, can never see that piece of information again. Right. Um, that, so you just, things like TFNs or director IDs, that's sort of that's stuff. yeah, exactly. Yeah. That that's probably one of the bigger use cases. So they um on your end you have to unlock it to say yes, nice. like I or put in my password to look at this piece of sensitive information. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then yeah, so the client would just see, yep, you're you're done with this question, but we can't show you what you put here because uh, yeah. it's confidential. And so that means if they forward that email to someone else or someone gets into that link, then that data is inaccessible. Yeah, nice. No, that's that's really comforting, and yeah, just on that sort of um, giving clients or yeah, or making them set up a username and password. We've got team members that <laughs> forget the password to tools they log into on a daily basis. So yeah. I'm with you. I think the pin code is the way to go, and maybe using a tool like Zapier to SMS them that code. So in another system or another tool that's not their email inbox is just a, probably a way to mitigate that risk of that pin code being compromised too, right? Yeah, so so at the moment we actually don't even we can't even send the pin code like it's set by the client. Yeah, so we used to have it okay. so the pin was set separately and you could send via a different tool, but now it's actually the client sets it themselves. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. just because um, it's easier for them to remember because otherwise, if yeah. you're yeah, if you're creating a pin automatically or whatever, then um, then they've got to remember that pin and then go look for it next time they access the request. It's just easier for them if they set it themselves and hopefully remember it. Oh, definitely. No, that's really great. I think before I ask you about the sort of roadmap or development path in general, mm-hmm. are there any features or yeah tools within Content Snare that you think don't get taken um, advantage of as much as they should or tools that you've built and you've gone, this is going to be an absolute winner and it's just not? been the case or things that you thought maybe this is not a feature that we need to build and it's just sort of skyrocketed like any sort of cliff notes there um i think just the main feature people don't use or aren't aware of is the uh smart request so this is this is our ai feature that i was saying before okay um, the one ai uh, feature that works yep yeah and it's it's quite simple in concept um on the back end it's it's fairly complicated but yeah um it allows you to just paste a list of questions in to a box and then it will generate the request based on that list of questions. It'll automatically cool. build the request and, and select what type of question it is, whether that's a file upload. It even knows, you know, if you're asking for bank statements, it, it knows that's a multi-file yeah. question and yeah, cool. it, it's pretty clever. Um, and you're like, this is an address question. This is a currency question, whatever. And so you just paste the list. Of, so the idea here was like, I want it to be as easy for someone to send a request as it is to send an email because otherwise people are going to just, even though it's, you know, what is it like? Makes so much People sense, are really yeah. bad at like borrowing time from their future self. They'll mm-hmm. send this email now because it's easier, even though they know it's going to suck later on. Yeah. Yeah. So, but even though they've got content snare, because then they like, even if it took them five minutes to set up, you add each question one at a time, they still won't do it because it's friction now. And, and yes. there's, there's an actual word for this. And I can't remember it. Anyway. Yeah. We wanted it to be just as easy. So you go in there, smart request, paste the list of questions, and it goes, thinks for a while, and, and then nice. you know, give it a sanity check to make sure it's got the right types of questions in there, and then hit send. You know, that's kind yeah. of the that's probably one of our biggest um, things that people don't use enough, but when they do, they love it. That is really cool, and I, I'm with you. Like the that email thing, it's just the path of least resistance. Like it's literally just this is easy right now. I'm going to do it, and. Yeah, we've obviously got to think of the client at the end of it or just follow business process. It's probably another element of that too and think about mm-hmm. security. Um, that's awesome. So that's live now, is it? That's a shipped feature, yeah, yeah, AI yeah. feature? Oh, wow. All right. I can't imagine what's um, how you're going to top that on the development path or roadmap. Have you got any insights <laughs> on what's coming up or what you're working on? Yeah, so biggest ones are um, – so ID verification, is like, it's almost done. Um, so obviously that's yep. a big one with the ATO requirements. Um yep. But the next ones to so bulk send, being able to send one request to lots and lots of clients at the same cool. time. 
um, recurring requests and scheduled requests. So like, you know, if you've got, you need the same five things from a particular client every month, you can recur a request and likewise schedule it. It's funny, like, um, two, two ways people use that. The first one I thought was kind of funny is that just like, they don't want to be looking like they're working on the weekend. So they'll <laughs> schedule it for Monday. Um, Monday yeah. yeah, yeah um, yeah. but the other one is like loading up all your compliance work before it needs to be done. And just so, you know, you don't even need to, you just load all the, you know, hundred different clients. You might create them all, schedule mm-hmm. them, set, schedule 50 for this date, 50 for this date, whatever to spread it oh, out okay. and, and let it go. Yeah. So instead of being your own worst enemy and doing all that at once, like mm-hmm. you're actually making life a bit easier for you. Well, that's the, I mean, the opposite of what you're saying before about your future self, like that's actually practically thinking about let's, um, let's manage our workload for mm-hmm. the financial year. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, thank you, James. That's, that's awesome. I've yeah really enjoyed the chat about content snare and the use cases and, and where it's going. Um, what's the best way for a listener or anyone to sort of learn more or, or get started? It's just contestsnare.com. Um, yeah, there's a lot there. You can, if you go to the templates um, page, you can have a look at all the, you can actually click. It's like a working demo of what the client would see for each template. So if you want to go to yep. like client onboarding or, you know, whatever, um, the accounting client onboarding, you click into that and you'd see exactly what the client would see. Yeah. Uh, so you can see what that experience is like. Yeah, that's, that's it. Just explore the how it works area to see all the different features and if security, if you want to read about that. Um, but there's a start a trial button top right hand corner of that. And, um, yeah, like it, it's funny in this space. I think people are trained to expect like this complicated demo process and sales yeah. process. Yeah, yeah. But like that's not the space Contact we come us. from. Yeah. Like I, I, I don't like going through that process. It's there. If someone wants it, they can book a demo and like there's a request a demo in the header. But, okay. um, you know, otherwise, if this just sounds good, start a trial and sign up. Like it's that easy. You don't actually need to talk to anyone if you don't want to. Yep. Yeah, nice. Okay. So we, we now know how to make you cringe instantly when you see one of those demo requests come through. Even though <laughs> you've got all the videos and resources on the page. I'm with you. Like people just want to self-service and get started and, and mm. find out how it all works and, and try and break it. So yeah, well done. It's an awesome tool. Um, I'm really keen to look into it more for our business in particular. So yeah, James, thanks for your time. No worries, Patrick. Thanks for having me. 